Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to do my weekly wrap up for the week of the 24th of September through to the 30th, so the end of the month. I have been on a term break, which means I've actually got some reading done and it's amazing. This week I read six books. I read a picture book, a junior fiction book, a adult sci-fi dystopian style book, and three young adult books. So a bit of range this week. I read a total of 1,946 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 199 books. So I'm super excited about that. The first book that I read this week was an e-galley sent to me by NetGalley for review and that is Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. And this was just an absolutely beautiful book. It isn't out yet, I don't believe. I think it's due out at the end of October, perhaps. It reads like a fairy tale. I haven't read any of Anne Marie's previous works, but I absolutely adored this one. It is about a family of women, so sisters and cousins of one another, who live together in this beautiful garden that they tend. And there's a real magical realism element woven through it because these women tend to the garden and they help it to grow. And the flowers that it produces are just beautiful. But the catch is that these women can't ever leave the gardens. If they do, the gardens actually try and, and kill them. And that's something that you find out pretty early on. It's a generational thing. So there are five young girls who are in their teens, as well as their mothers and their grandmothers. We really follow the story of the younger girls and they're all in love with the same woman, the woman who currently is in charge of running the estate. However, that is called into question when more of her family members arrive. There's a whole underlying mystery because one day a boy appears in the garden and they don't know who he is or where he comes from and he doesn't remember either. And so they try and discover, you know, who is he? Why did he appear in the garden? Why did the garden bring him to them? Macklemore writes so beautifully. I, I'm actually really intrigued to check out her other books just based off this one because it really felt like a fairy tale and I absolutely adored it. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm trying to decide whether to buy myself a hard copy of the book because it was just beautiful to read and the cover is stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. The second book I read is Divided Kingdom by Rupert Thompson. And this was a book that was gifted to me by a friend for my birthday. And it is a secondhand copy of the book, which is totally fine. I love secondhand copies of books. It is an adult speculative fiction slash dystopian style story. It's sort of difficult to pin down. It is the story of a world where the United Kingdom government has decided to embark on a political experiment and everyone in the United Kingdom has their personality type tested and everyone is grouped into four categories. And these four categories then form four new kingdoms. So in the middle of the night, families are separated from one another. Everyone is reassigned to new homes and borders are erected around these four kingdoms, hence the divided kingdom. And people can't cross over unless suddenly your personality type no longer matches the one that you were previously assigned to. People were segregated because the government believed that by keeping them separate that they would solve a lot of society's problems, the violence and, and whatnot. We follow the story of an eight-year-old boy as he is working in the middle of the night and uh, separated from his parents into his new faction and then we follow his life as he grows up and eventually he comes to work for a branch of the government. He is eventually sent out to a conference in one of the other sectors. It's his journey of discovering the impact that this experiment has had on society and on him himself. I'm not going to pretend to understand everything that happened in this book. And that happens to me a lot with speculative fiction. What I can say is I enjoyed it and I found it really intriguing. This whole idea of, you know, trying to group people by personality and hoping that it's going to end well. It gave me real at the handmaid's tale vibes. And at the beginning of the story, it also gave me the boy at the top of the mountain vibes because you're sort of seeing how impressionable kids can be and how they can be manipulated into doing things for people. This is really one of those books that's so difficult to describe. And if you're interested in speculative fiction or speculative dystopian fiction, I would recommend that you check it out. If you have read it, let me know in the comments so we can talk about it because maybe you can help me understand the ending because I understood the majority of the story, but the ending just went off a little bit for me and I'm, I'm not entirely sure that I get it. So I gave it a 3.5 out of five stars. I did enjoy it. And I couldn't put it down once I started reading it, but it was just, yeah, one of those books where, you know, when you just read and you don't get it sometimes, but you enjoy it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird like that. The next book that I read was Alone by DJ Brazier. And this was a book that was 
given to me by the school librarian to read over the holidays. And it is a junior fiction book about a boy whose plane goes down and he is trapped in the jungle alone with nothing but a baby otter for company. I am not one for survivalist stories and this is definitely a survivalist story and there are parts that really freaked me out. So just be, if you easily squicked. I mean, I know quite a few boys at the school who would really love this book just because of the detail. But for me, I'm like, mm, squicky. I would never survive being trapped in a jungle by myself. So yeah, the will to survive that this little boy has as well as his connection with the family of otters and then the baby otter as well was really cute and really well done. It was very easy to read. It was originally published in 2016. Overall, I gave it three out of five stars. It's not typically my genre, but I'm glad that I read it because now I can talk about it with the kids at school. The next two books I'm gonna talk about together because they are part of the same series and that is Akane and Relia, the first two books in the Medora Chronicles by Lynette Oni. They were originally published in 2015 and 2016 respectively. And this is a young adult fantasy book written by an Australian author and they were really entertaining. And that's the best word that I can use for them because they're not overly sophisticated books. And I don't say that to be critical, I just say that because I tend to read a lot of fantasy books that have really complex rules and you have to fill in a lot of gaps a lot of the time. And these books, you're told a lot of things and a lot of things are made really simple for the characters, but it's such a fun read that you don't really care so much. It is the story of Alex who one day accidentally opens a door into Medora. So she's from Earth, she opens this door, and I love, you know, I love portal fantasy stuff. I love people going through doors. She goes through this door, she lands in Medora and finds herself enrolled at Akane, which is a school for gifted people in Medora. She makes a couple of friends really quickly and also finds herself in a lot of trouble really quickly. The library that exists at the school and the library is really cool. So I suggest you, if you like library stories where libraries are really awesome, like this library is sentient. So that was awesome. The real strength in the stories relies in the relationships between the friends. Like I said, I loved the library. The library is one of my favorite things ever. I love the combat classes because I'm a sucker for anything to do with combat and fight scenes. So is it the best fantasy series I've ever read? Probably not, not even in young adult fiction, but it is highly enjoyable and entertaining. And I'm really kicking myself because I had the opportunity to pick up the third book the other day and I didn't do it. And I should have, because then I could have just gone through the the books because now if I pick it up I don't mm, who knows where it's going to sit on my TBR but if you're looking just for something that's fun that's fantastical and enjoyable and has good friendship prep I highly recommend these I gave them both four out of five stars but I really highly enjoyed them the last book that I want to talk about is a picture book and that is That Christmas Feeling by Lily Wilkinson and illustrated by Amanda Francie and this was sent to me for review by Alan Nunwin so thank you very much to them for that it is the story of siblings Dottie and Jem and their dog Shortbread who are staying with their grandparents for Christmas their parents are somewhere else we don't find out where they are until, right until the end and Dottie and Jem are discovering that Christmas at their grandparents' house is very different to Christmas at their house and that the Christmas traditions that they would normally have are a little bit different. And Dottie in particular finds this really difficult. Her brother's a little bit more accepting and tries to help her through this because he's a little bit older. This is just really heartwarming and a nice way to teach kids that just because sometimes things are different, it doesn't mean that they're bad and that sometimes you can find that Christmas feeling, that magical feeling that you have in strange and unexpected ways. And I think that's a beautiful message to send to kids. Obviously I gave this five out of five stars because I adore Christmas picture books and this one was just really, really cute and it's got beautiful illustrations. And at the bottom of the tagline says, it's a gorgeous celebration of love and family to share every Christmas season and it absolutely is. So if you're looking for a good Christmas picture book recommendation for the little kids in your life, I highly recommend this one. So those are the books that I read this week. Pretty happy with how it turned out. In the comments, let me know what books have you been reading this week? What's been standing out to you as a really, really good read? If you've read any of the books that I have read, feel free to chat to me about them in the comments below. I would love to talk to you about them or hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.